Two deadly accidents involving U.S. Navy ships last year could lead to severe consequences for the officers involved in the collisions at sea. John Yang has the details of the harsh charges against the commanders of the two vessels. Judy, last June, the USS Fitzgerald, a destroyer that's part of the U.S. 7th Fleet in the Pacific, was broadsided off the coast of Japan by a massive container ship. The collision killed seven sailors aboard the Fitzgerald and crippled the vessel. Two months later, near Singapore, there was another incident involving a 7th Fleet guided missile destroyer, the John S. McCain, named for the Arizona senator's father and grandfather, both admirals. It collided with a merchant vessel. Ten sailors died in that accident. Now, the former commanders of both vessels, Bryce Benson of the Fitzgerald and Alfredo J. Sanchez of the McCain, face a battery of offenses, including negligent homicide. Both men had previously been relieved of command, part of a wave of disciplinary actions across the Seventh Fleet. For more on the unusual nature of these charges, I'm joined by retired Lieutenant Colonel Gary Solis, a Marine Corps combat veteran of Vietnam. He's an expert in military law and teaches law at Georgetown University and George Washington University. Gary, thanks for joining us. You were a lawyer in the Marines, a judge in the Marines. How unusual is it to have charges like this, negligent homicide, filed against, uh, pending against two officers? It's more than extremely rare. It's never happened before. I can find, I can think of no precedent for the court-martial of an officer for an incident like this. The, the top command or, or higher-up command, would the brass be involved in a decision like this? Yes, uh, definitely so. Uh, this is not uh, your ordinary court-martial, of course, and so the drafting of charges uh, would be something that would be of interest to the higher command and something that they would, and lawfully can, uh, take a hand in. They want to ensure that uh, there is there is a price to pay uh, and that uh, justice is done. What do you think is going on here? I think that a message is being sent to the 7th Fleet and the rest of the United States Navy, and particularly commanding officers of ships everywhere, that they are going to have to take a closer hand in the training and the drilling and the oversight of their ships and their seamen. And has this been a problem? I mean, after the second collision of the McCain, there was a stand down to review safety. There have been a number of, uh, of top commanders relieved of command. Uh, are they try what are they trying to address here? You said they're trying to tell them to pay more attention. Right. Clearly, there is something wrong when you have uh, not only these two collisions, but you also have a grounding uh, of the Antietam and you have the Lake Champlain uh, colliding with a fishing boat all in 2017. So what this is addressing is a need to pay closer attention to the training of these crews, to the manning of the uh, of the con to the watch officers who are overseeing uh, the lookouts and to the officer of the deck who's overseeing everyone when the captain isn't uh, on the bridge. Are, so are these charges against the commanders of these ships, not necessarily for things they may have done or not done, but maybe things that their, their crew didn't do? Well, that's true. But uh, as you know, in the military, commanding officers, particularly, particularly commanding officers of ships, are responsible for, as they say, everything that goes on during their watch and everything that fails to go on during their watch. So this is not all that unusual in the military. At Milai, for example, there was a commanding general of the division was also uh, referred to trial, although he never went to trial. But uh, commanding officers will always be taking the hits, legal hits, uh, for the substandard performance of their units. These two commanders, relieved of duty already, their careers probably over. Definitely. Uh, what, what could happen now? Could they go to military prison if they're convicted? Absolutely. Absolutely. These are serious charges. The maximum punishment for uh, negligent homicide is three years. And they're also charged with dereliction of duty, which is uh, three months is the maximum and hazarding a vessel uh, through negligence two years. So were they convicted of those three things, they could be looking at years uh, confinement. But I don't think that's going to happen. Why not? Because the message has been sent merely by preferral of charges. 
And when they go to trial, actually go to court martial, which I assume will happen, uh, I would anticipate uh, a pretrial agreement and a guilty plea. But it's hard to envision the commanders of these ships actually going to prison. The purpose of these courts martials, in my estimation, is as much to send a warning to other commanders, as we've already said, as it is to address the shortcomings, alleged shortcomings of these officers. Gary Solis, thanks so much for joining us to help us understand this. My pleasure, thank you.